Wave 4 3 Industries has seen a lot of shakeups when it comes to Halo Infinite and the team as a whole so far this year. We've seen pretty much every lead dev at 343 leave for some other project. Even the head of 343, Bonnie Ross, left now being replaced with Pierre Hinze. Yep, that's how you pronounce his name. Check it out right here. My name is Pierre Hinze. There are a lot of questions to be answered about what the future is going to be of Halo Infinite and also the team at 343. Well, I'll answer that and a lot more within this video. So if you want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand understand all the details. First, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, E-Win Racing. E-Win Racing recently sent me their Champion Series Ergonomic Chair. After using this chair for some epic gamer sessions, I have to say, it's great. This chair has E-Win Racing soft weave fabric that's soft and sturdy, built for people like myself who spend hours working from home and gaming every week. The E-Win Cold Cure Foam puts it well above standard high resiliency foam, engineered to be two times heavier than regular foam per cubic foot. The elasticity of the foam helps prolong the comfort life of the chair and adds to the overall durability. This E-Win Racing chair lets you position it exactly how it fits you best. The armrests move up and down, front to back, and side to side with an adjustable seat height and tilt. With the ability to angle your chair from 85 degrees to 155 degrees, you'll be able to find what works for you. This Champion Series chair comes with the E-Win Prime hubless wheels, featuring all metal ball bearing for soft, smooth glide and long lasting usage. The most important feature for me is that this chair supports people ranging from 5'3 to 6'5. As someone who's six foot four, I've always struggled to find a chair that can help me stay in a proper sitting position. This E-Win racing chair does just that. This chair in particular holds up to 400 pounds if needed. And even if you are taller and need some more support, E-Win racing has got you covered there as well. E-Win racing actually sent me this chair over a year ago and you can see it's still in great shape after daily usage of being my main chair. Assembly is super easy. At most, it took me like 10 to 15 minutes to put this chair together. And E-Win Racing provides you all the parts and tools that you need. With so many different styles and sizes, E-Win Racing has you covered for what you're looking for. For additional content, they also have desks and other accessories if you're interested in those. But don't just take my word for it. Read what outlets like IGN, GamesRadar, Windows Central, PC Gamer, and so many more have had to say about E-Win Racing. Finding an affordable big and tall gaming chair is well, a tall order, but thankfully, Ewen has stepped up to the plate. After using Ewen Flash XL chair for a week, it would be hard to recall a more comfortable gaming experience. For max comfort, style, and longevity, the Ewen Champion Series ergonomic chair is a winner. Previously, I have had my own gaming chairs in a way with very similar style, but just didn't quite hold up to the quality standards that Ewen Racing has to offer. After prolonged usage, the leather might start to crack, some things might not start working properly, but I tell you, after a year plus of using E-Win racing chairs, I guarantee you that the quality is there. If you're looking for the best gaming chair, make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and in the description of this video. Make sure to use my code KevinCoolX at checkout to get yourself 25% off your purchase. Thank you again, E-Win Racing, for sponsoring this video, and let's get right back into those details. Jessica Sorrentino asks, where do you see Halo Infinite in the coming future if 343 manages it in the same way they are right now? With most of the original leadership gone, will Pierre Hintze take it in the right direction? The future of Halo Infinite seems very interesting right now, where I think at the point where we are, it is the game to play right now. It is the game to support, to create content, to get people to jump in, to interact with the Halo franchise in some way. Obviously, we do know about those massive layoffs that happened that mainly hit the campaign team side of things. So we're not really going to see anything at campaign DLC happening anytime soon with Halo Infinite. Whatever we're going to see when it comes to Halo Infinite, it's going to be for the multiplayer. There's not going to be any campaign DLC or any kind of storytelling kind of stuff. We're going to see a lot of focus on that as one. It's the free to play model. It helps keep the light on because you have those microtransactions flowing in. Financially, you kind of have to think of it as like a baseball analogy in the way. It's a lot easier to hit singles and doubles like as in doing seasonal updates with microtransactions or you do you go for the home run and develop a whole new campaign for the game. What I see happening is that one, that Unreal Engine switch leak that came out from Jason Schreier, which I'm assuming is rather credible in some kind of way, that most likely a new Halo campaign would be created on the Unreal Engine 
then with the Slipspace engine, Halo Infinite multiplayer kind of continuing on. And we've read this from multiple reports that the hardest thing about developing for Halo Infinite was the proprietary engine of Slipspace, which is just a heavily modified version of the original Blam engine that Bungie built decades ago. The Halo community and gaming community as a whole can't wait another six years for another mainline Halo title to come out for a campaign story. What's the best way to do about that? Well, the Unreal Engine is the most unified, most well-versed uh, engine that people know how to develop in. They get the quickest, best product out there, switching to Unreal might be the best move. And that's where I think Pierre comes in to try to mix things up a little bit with the development of Halo Infinite. He did a great job when it came to the Master Chief Collection, and we see how it was built up much more than just like recreating the games. They really built upon that to kind of make it into their own thing, but also still being able to recognize the legacy those games had. So I'm assuming with Pierre that they might go with a little bit different of a development style, like say switching engines completely and things like that, but also finding a way to maintain the essence of what Halo is. Of course, that's wishful thinking. Pierre could also just lead the team into a radically different direction as well. Some of the stuff that they added into MCC, well, wasn't exactly original content tied to the lore of the original Halo games, but yet it was still really fun. CS Juturna, if I pronounce that correctly, asks if I was in Pierre Hinsett's situation, what would I do? That's such a difficult call to make because there's so much that being a developer, being the inside of 343, understanding what the mechanics are of how the team can create something, makes a huge difference of what your decisions would be moving forward. So the best thing I can do is make the assumptions and also what I would like to see on the outside as a consumer. Personally, I would love to see them continue to develop on Halo Infinite. I think what the foundations we have there for that multiplayer is really good. It's my favorite multiplayer since Halo 3. Biggest things that are missing for Halo Infinite's multiplayer are one, some kind of new experience we've never had before in the franchise, because yeah, we can play Team Slayer and all we want, but we've been doing that for the last 20 years, you know? Another thing is developing seasonal content and a regular cadence. Now we're starting to get to that point. We should be seeing season four Korea around here on June 20th with leaks and rumors pointing to a lot of PVE content coming in, possibly Forge Firefights. Another thing I've been hearing about, hearing a lot about the PVE King of the Hill mode called Bastion, the extraction game mode that's also supposed to be PVE, as well as the return of infection. But I think what Pierre Hinse is gonna be pulling off for Halo Infinite and also the Halo franchise is more long-term what's going to happen in the next five years when it comes to Halo. One thing we got to think about is how we're going to do another campaign. The campaign is a surefire way to get a lot of casual audience back in the Halo up. I mean, everyone's going to be talking about a new campaign when it comes to Halo. The thing is that you can't wait super long, like I mentioned earlier, like another six years, that can't happen. I would think what's the best product we could possibly put out in the shortest amount of time. I think again, those rumors of switching to the Unreal Engine and where this kind of ties into Halo Infinite and the Halo franchise, I have a feeling we're going to get a whole new Halo game. Halo Infinite's not going to make it to the 10 year plan that they mentioned before. Though honestly, I think it'd be a really interesting thing if you just continue on with Halo Infinite as the multiplayer side of things and then keep releasing campaigns as their own like expansion, separate kind of things, kind of like an ODST kind of way where it's still tied to the main storyline, right? But it's just mainly a campaign. Maybe you can tie it into some kind of update with the multiplayer as well to get people to hop over to the multiplayer side of things from playing the campaign. It could also be a way where since we lost a lot of the campaign team at 343, if you can outsource that to another company. With 343 obviously still being the idea people and also laying out the plans of how to make things happen, but then the hard work label laboring the working part of it, handing out to the contractors to tell them, hey, do this. So then 343 is not necessarily developing every single aspect of Halo, but certainly has their hands in managing everything. We see that right now with the Call of Duty franchise where you still have this, the main three of Sledgehammer, Infinity Ward, and Treyarch are the three main developers making the games. We have an incredible amount of supporting studios around the three main studios studios to help keep each game up and flowing with enough content and enough things to do in there. So honestly, if we kind of go to that Call of Duty model of development, I think that could work out really well for Halo. Obviously not yearly releases, because I don't think that really plays out well for the Halo franchise, but take that same kind of model, but at a smaller scale. Fisai asked, do you think 343 will stop making new armor cores and focus on adding more content to fractures we already have? In addition, do you believe that future armor will be made with cross core in mind? I feel like every video has to mention cross core customization in some way. Well, right here is an example of some new customization for the Yo Roy armor set. We talked about this in previous videos. You see right here with the Yo Roy armor set character in the season three cinematic showcasing that has different kinds of customization that we currently don't have right now in Halo Infinite. And the 
current leaks and rumors are that this will be part of the new Fracture Core event coming in with Season 4. This is going to be adding on to the Yo Roy armor set. I'm sure some people at first will be like, oh, no new core. That's kind of lame. But you also got to think about with the Yo Roy set, there really isn't much in the way of customization available for it. Taking a quick example, showcasing like the helmet. So that's the most signature part that's really going to tell out like what your Spartan looks different than everybody else. There are only three helmets that were able to be unlocked through gameplay. Another one right here for that was part of the microtransactions, part of the store, but only three helmets. Uh, another really big surprise are the gauntlets right here. Just this one. There's, there's nothing else. It's just this one right there. Uh, even with the uh, wrist attachment as well, it's it's just that one that I believe it was also part of the microtransaction part of the store as well on top of that. I mean, look at the belts, right? You had two different spots right here. That's one was part of the store bundle. So there really isn't much in the way of customization available. And the whole point of customization really is for you to stand out to really show yourself, like make you feel like an individual out on the battlefield, right? Like look at all these shoulder pieces that were part of like parts of money you had to spend to actually earn your customization for if you're just playing gameplay just these two different shoulder pads there really isn't like a whole lot for you to do for your especially for your yoga but also just kind of comes to your armor cores just in general especially when it comes to the fractures now when it comes to future cores coming in with cross core in mind i'm sure they have that in mind but i'm pretty sure they won't let that be some kind of like limitation if if something looks really awesome on this core they'll go that route like you mentioned previously they don't expect to have everything available for cross core some are certain aspects some armors might kind of cross over like some helmets maybe some shoulder pads or something maybe different armor attachments but i don't ex ever really expect to see a full-blown cross core customization for anything and anywhere but we do know that that is currently in the works right now they are working on cross core customization it just hasn't really heard much about it. I have a feeling when it comes to the Xbox Bethesda showcase coming around early June, we talked about this in a previous video on the channel here, so if you guys want to catch all the videos, make sure you tap subscribe, but I believe we'll get a big customization update when it comes to Season 4 brought up within the Xbox Bethesda showcase because this is something that people have been wanting since the release of Halo Infinite. Every time I release a video that says cross work customization, it always gets more views than anything else because this is what the player base really wants. And that'd be a perfect time to make an announcement saying like, look at this, you can do all this awesome customization now with our update coming with season four. Well, so the last time we had any update when it came to cross core customization was back in August 9th when we finally got that visor cross core. And a lot of technical issues and limitations of the engine was given to the developers have been lifted quite recently so i have a feeling with season four we're going to get some pretty awesome news coming our way which should be very soon most likely throughout may and definitely within the xbox with this showcase in early june of course if you get any more of that information i'll share it with you guys here on the channel joshua rojo asks do you think pierre will show his face on the next showcase to talk about what Neo 343 will do with the franchise. This is something that I feel is absolutely needed for the Halo community and also just have a better sense of what's happening with Halo in the future. One is having Pierre come out and address the people. We haven't really had that yet. We've had a few tweets here and there, but mainly he's been a guy behind the scenes kind of making things work when it comes to Halo right now. I forgot what the heck the future is going to be. And I'm sure the reason why we haven't heard much is because of how hectic things have been with the first half of this year. The last thing we heard was actually a message from the 343 three twitter that's up itself not even pure hinsay but talking about saying that 343 will continue to develop halo in the future with including epic stories multiplayer and more that's the last thing we heard from him just like one little sentence saying hey don't worry we got it and i'm sure watching this video you're like wait that's actually how you pronounce his last name hinsay so that actually kind of tells you one thing about how little we've actually heard and seen from him but like i said it's kind of understandable as how much of a shakeup there has been when it comes to the halo franchise in 343 talking about neo 343 well like i said earlier basically all the lead devs that made halo infinite are no longer at 343 so when i saw the hashtag going around saying fire 343 well you effectively got it because pretty much every lead dev is no longer with the company. So it really is like a new version of 343 there now. But when it comes to Neo 343 doing something with Halo's future for the franchise, I don't really think we'll know that much about it. The biggest thing I think right now is just trying to see what can we do right here, right now to keep Halo going. And I don't really expect to see any kind of big picture things being talked about at the Xbox Bethesda showcase here in early June because what Xbox and Phil Spencer previously said about this presentation that they only want to keep to the next 12 months they don't want to go like three four years out in advance showcase something and then not hear anything about it i'm talking about fable talking about the new skyrim game talking about how they also did the announcements for halo infinite but i do believe we'll see pierre out 
in making a speech in front of the people talking about Halo, most likely focusing on the season four content. And if it's ready, we could hear things about Tatanka slash that battle royale mode that's been leaked and rumored about for over a year now at this point. Uh, last thing we heard that the development has kind of stopped, at least on the slip space side of things, might have been switched over to Unreal, might come out at the end of this year, might come out early 2024. You just kind of have to wait and see when it comes to that date. But of course, once we get some more information, I'll definitely let you guys know. When it comes to these big showcase presentations, we usually get like a lot of good leaks and rumors like at least like the month before if not a couple weeks before the release so so you know where to go when it comes to getting your uh your halo news over here make sure you check out the link in the pinned comment and in the description of this video for e-win racing awesome chairs great sponsor long time sponsor of the channel here guys thank you all so much for watching greatly appreciate it catch you on the next one peace out